this is Chris KF7P and this video is about how to order an entry panel. An entry panel box is a convenient way to bring your RF cables and control lines from outside to inside. I'm going to cover the pertinent details related to installing an entry panel box and some tips on proper grounding, bonding, and protection of expensive radio gear. Step 1. Where do you want the entry panel and how are the cables coming through the wall? Ideally the radio shack is on an outside wall, also it's preferable to keep the distance from the panel to the radios as short as possible. Other cable routing options include running through crawl space vents and up through the floor, through an exterior wall into basements and across the basement ceiling and into the shack, or even up an exterior wall and through a soffit into the attic. In a perfect situation, the entry panel is next to your utility entrance or meter as you'll want to bond the utility ground to the ground rod you'll be installing under the entry panel. More about that later. It's even possible to go through a brick wall using a core drill, which is beyond the scope of this video, but I should reiterate that it's important to measure twice and cut once. Make sure the hole coming out on the exterior is coming out where you think it will. At my own QTH, I decided to cut out a small square of drywall, which would fit a double gang box. In the back of the double gang box, I used a hole saw that would fit the same size conduit that was going through the wall. This worked out really slick and allowed me to put a small cover plate over the gang box, which I drilled holes in for the cables to come out. Alternately, you can also use one of several wall treatment devices, which are found on my website under cable management, or if you're using conduit to go through the wall from the box, you can just cut it off flush with the interior wall. The next step is the configuration of the box itself. The hole for the cables going through the wall can be in the top left corner, top right corner, centered, or on one of the bottom corners. It's definitely best and it's easiest to route the cables if the hole is in one of the top left or right corners. Occasionally a hole has to be on the one of the bottom corners. This isn't ideal because the cables have to do a 180 degree bend inside the box in order to go back through that hole. It's also possible for all cables to go in and out the bottom through a series of grommets which are usually on the left and the right sides, such as in these photos. You can also put conduit in the bottom of the box or the sides depending on your circumstance. The last part of configuration is how many grommet holes you want in the bottom of the box. On my entry panel webpage there are recommendations as to how many grommets can fit in various size boxes. One alternative to using grommets is to use a cable gland instead. Now these are nice because they completely seal around the cable. However, there are two warnings you need to know about using a cable gland. First, they don't fit in the same size hole as the rubber grommets. So I need to know exactly where you want the glands in order to put the correct size hole in the box. Second, because the size is much smaller than a rubber grommet, the cable connector must be put on after the cable is pushed through the gland in the box, which makes putting the connector on inside the box quite a chore. Step three in ordering an entry panel is getting the right size box. The sizes are small through extra large, and I do custom sizes on occasion, but the sizes are based generally on the number of cables going in the bottom of the box or the number of arresters that you're gonna have inside. On my entry panel page, over on the right side of each size box, it gives recommendations on the conduit size that fits in that box best and how many grommets can fit in that size box. If you think there is any chance at all your antenna farm is going to grow, you may wanna get one box size larger than you think you need so you have room for future expansion. Step four, now for the fun stuff. You get to pick the color that you want it painted and some of the other accessories. We currently offer 18 colors of powder coat paint and two different latch options for the box. The standard stainless steel latch can be padlocked or a keyed cam lock can also be installed. Step five, installing arresters and mounting the box. With the copper sheet removed, you'll see four holes in the corners for mounting the box to your wall. Now is a good time to cut that hole in the wall for the conduit and then you can install the box centered over that hole and then push the conduit through from the inside and install it in the box. Once the box is mounted on the wall and the conduit is installed, you can reinstall the copper sheet and then connect the copper sheet to ground using one of two ways. It can be done with a copper wire lug using round wire, or you can do it with flat copper strap, which is secured with sheet metal screws. Now for the mounting of the arresters. Morgan manufacturing units mount directly to the copper sheet from the top using self-drilling sheet metal screws. Alpha Delta units attach with a machine screw through a drilled hole from the back side of the copper sheet. 
and polyphaser units attach from the top with either a self-drilling sheet metal screw or through a drilled hole using a machine screw and nut. Step six is about accessories. So now we know where the box is going to be placed. We know how the cables are going through the wall. We've got the size and the color figured out. We know how we're gonna mount the arresters inside. Now we're gonna talk about the accessories that are needed to get things finished off. On the entry panel page near the bottom is a section of optional accessories. We have rubber grommets that go in the bottom, the plastic plugs to seal up unused holes, there's self-adhesive weather strip that goes between the back of the box and the wall of the house that it's mounted on. And down here is something that's really useful. It's a grommet to cable seal. It's a way to seal up that little gap that goes between the coax cable and the grommet. It's a foam insert that just goes between those two and helps keep critters and cold air out. Next to the grommet to cable seals is installation. So if you'd like to have the arresters installed in the box on the copper sheet, Add this to cart and then specify how many you have. Other common items that are ordered are the conduit kit in three different sizes, whether it's inch and a half, two inch, or three inch conduit. It comes with a fitting that goes in the box plus an 18 inch long piece of conduit to go through the wall. There's a Penetrox A grease, which is uh, good for the back of the arresters when you're mounting it on the copper sheet. Up here are copper wire lugs. That's a good way to get the wire attached to the copper sheet. And then we also have some tin copper braid. The copper braid is a good way to bond your shack ground with the ground panel in the box. You don't ever want to use braid outdoors, but it's okay to go through the wall and into the box. The seventh and final step is a consideration of some related accessories for grounding and completing off your installation. You'll need to ground the box to a ground rod below, and that can be done with flat copper strap, with the proper clamps that go on a ground rod or with round wire and Harger makes some really nice heavy-duty clamps for this purpose. Another common item are terminal strips. These provide a breakout point for your rotator cable and also shack ground bars. This provides a convenient way to bond all of the various items of shack gear to a common point. Well that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions that weren't covered in this video please send me an email or give me a call and we can discuss your specific situation and come up with a solution. Thanks again, 73.